last couple of days we've been making parts and we got this one partly assembled. Uh, don't have the shelf fastened down yet. The top's not fastened down and distressed yet. This one's the one with the drawer in it. Uh, the other one will have the full door. Uh, it'll have the full panels down the side. Been putting this one together with a domino machine. Got my legs all mortised out with the domino. And that'll fit in corresponding dominoes with the side panels. This is what the side panel. This is what the side panel looks like put together. And I've got this distressed. I've been distressing this as I've been going. It's a little bit easier at this point just to go ahead and distress it before I assemble it. So we're going to set this one aside. We take the top, get it sanded up, get it distressed, and then we'll start assembling the uh, base for the other one. Okay, we're going to sand this up and then we're going to distress it. Okay, I'm basically just going to use three tools to distress this top with. Got my belt sander, got my little uh, punch, and I've got my homemade distressing tool. So what I start out with, I just start with the belt sander. As you can see, I just use the side of the belt and just let, start letting it dig in and it just gives that nice rough uh, a smooth texture to it. Also, I like to take the corners and I just kind of round them off a little bit. Use them. That's pretty much all I do on the edges. Uh, take my beater here. And then this is simulating my wormholes. And if you want to, you can put uh, knife cuts in it. You can take my knife, put some splits in it. And just take sanders and start smoothing things out. What grit sandpaper are you using? 150 grit on the solder. That's as far as I'm going to go with this. I'm going to put a hand rub oil finish on the Ruger Monocoat finish. So it's really 150 grits, holy. 
want you to go down to so that it'll, it'll uh, soak in real nicely. Pretty much done right there. I'll go one more time. I'll send it one more time before I uh, put the finish on it, but I'll turn it over and get the bottom side here. Do the same thing. Finished product right there with the belt sander. Uh, it's pretty rough, so you, when you distress something, you don't want it to look like it just got distressed yesterday. You want it to look like it's been there for 50 years. So that's why I go ahead and take the the PA uh, sander and go back over just to smooth things out. Makes it nice and smooth and looks like it's uh, more of an east over edge. And. Uh... Show them again, close up of what you're hitting with. And that's just a... Uh, screen door spring, got some duct tape with some half inch nuts on it. To speak clearly. You have to speak clearly. <laughs> <laughs> you have to speak up with enthusiasm. So, if you take a blood object like a hammer, you want to distress something, uh, this is like done. You got a little spring action going here. So, uh, speeds things up quite a bit. And if you got like a whole armoire that you're doing or something, a big project, it takes a while to distress it. So uh, it's just a lot easier to have something that's spring. Like I said, this has got a spring action. You got just an awl or you're going like this. You got a spring action tool. And it goes pretty fast. So it's better to have springs you got in. A little spring action, a little something to go. Because it is, it is a lot of work to distress a whole piece of furniture. It takes quite a while to distress a whole piece. So these are just small end tables. But like I said, if you have a big armoire, which I've done several of them, and uh, yeah, you can spend a couple hours uh, just distressing the outside of it. And if you really want to get something uh, that's fun to do, let's bring the customer in and uh, let them take the first blow. Uh, it's, it's quite an experience. Uh, you hand them a distressing tool and you say, just whack it. And they look at you like you're crazy. And once they do it, man, five minutes later, you're just beating the heck out of things. So, yeah, that's a pretty fun thing to do. So, uh, you, I take it you have done that before? I have done that a couple of times, yeah. especially with the lady folks. They really get into beating things up once they get started. So, when it comes to distressing furniture, the best things to do is to have uh, some spring loaded tools. Well, it helps. There's a thousand ways to distress furniture, but uh, this is not that I've come up with. It seems to work pretty well for me. Gives it just enough texture. Doesn't go overboard. We used to sell kitchen cabinets. Uh, they would charge 10% extra on the whole cabinet job just to distress it. So 
It does, uh, it does take quite a bit of time. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about why I offset these dominoes, uh, the mortises and these domino legs. Um, this is only inch and three quarters thick. And if I put the domino here and, and one right across from it, the dominoes would go in and hit each other. So I just offset them a little bit, and that way uh, the full domino can go in. If you run into a situation where you have to uh, put them straight across from each other, you can just take the domino and 45 it and run it in there or cut one just a little bit short. So when I cut my legs, I, uh, I wanted the domino centered here, and I also wanted the domino centered in my panel. So uh, I just made this little plywood jig. It just slides right on, slides off. So when I have it on the, the jig on, I can set it on my panel and it automatically centers the panel cut. And then also when uh, I take that off, I can just lay it on there and it centers the domino in the center of the inch and three quarter leg. Saves a lot of time, you don't have to uh, adjust your cutters up and down all the time. That way you, you don't have to cut all the ones once, cut all the other ones and it gets a little confusing. So that's why that method to do that. So you have to uh, make it a different height adjustment on that jig for each application? Yeah, yeah, and you have to make a new jig for each one, but this is pretty standard. Uh, made these panels just a little over three quarters. They're about 13 sixteenths. These are inch and three quarters, so I did have to adjust my piece of plywood here. I ran through my big sander and uh, did some test cuts uh, and got it down to the right height. On this particular project, I'm going to go ahead and distress the legs and the panels. Uh, before I assemble them. This makes it a little easy on something like this. A lot of times I don't, but uh, I'm going to on this one. The, I'm going to distress the uh, three side, three corners. The one corner is going to be on the inside of the cabinet, so I'm not going to worry about getting it distressed. On these panels on the inside, uh, can't really get a sander in there, so I just take a chisel and I just go after it with the, just kind of chip some of that out. There we go. Okay, I'm going to lift the panel on the legs. So we got our dominoes all ready to go. And we're just going to start gluing. I usually start out putting the dominoes in the panel and on each side. And then that way you don't get confused. You don't want to put the panels, the dominoes in one panel and the dominoes in the leg on the other side. Uh, you always keep them consistent. You'll, be, you'll have better results and keep things straight. Just use an acid brush. Like your dominoes in. You don't want too much squeeze out. So.
Okay. So there is to it. Okay, we're going to cut some slots in the uh, top here, uh, top of the cabinet. We've got a couple of crossbars going across to hold the top down, but we have to put a couple of uh, slots in here to uh, for the screws, and we're going to elongate those slots uh, so that when we put the screw in into the top, the screw can move back and forth with the expansion and contraction of the top. So. We'll put uh, one there and there and one in the middle one on this end. It'll be plenty to hold the top down. Since we don't have enough room to uh, make a slot on these narrow uh, stretchers, uh, we're just going to go back and put a larger, uh, quite a bit bigger than the diameter of the screw itself, and that way it still we give it some uh, some wiggle room in there so it can expand and contract on the bottom shelf since this is solid wood panel. <laughs> 